Hey folks, welcome back, Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, I'm gonna take you through percentage uncertainty and combining uncertainties. So let's get into it. We've already seen that uncertainties can be expressed in absolute form, where we have our measurement plus or minus the uncertainty. So for example, you could have a voltage reading of 10 volts plus or minus 0.1 volts, or for example, five millimeters plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. Um, it's also possible, however, and actually more important for us to be able to express uncertainties in percentage form. So as an example, um, you could have your measurement plus or minus 1% or a measurement plus or minus 5%. And the reason percentage uncertainties are really important is because we need them to, in order to compare uncertainties. So let's say I had, um, let's say I had a distance measurement and I had an uncertainty in my distance measurement and I also had a time measurement and an uncertainty in my time measurement. I, if I wanted to calculate my speed, I would do a distance over time calculation, so speed equals distance divided by time. However, I've got two uncertainties associated, one with my distance and one with my time. And if I wanted to find out the total uncertainty in my speed, then I'm going to have to try and work out some overall combined uncertainty, and that's what we're going to go on and talk about later, but for now, we're just looking at percentage uncertainties and why. So we want to be able to compare uncertainties so that we know which one is having the biggest effect on our final result. Okay, so to find the percentage uncertainty, we use this relationship here. So it's percentage uncertainty is equal to the absolute uncertainty divided by the measurement times 100. So just to give you an example of this, let's go back to the, the part we talked about for uh, scale reading uncertainty in the previous video where we looked at measuring a pen with a ruler. So if you measured a pen with a ruler and using this example, we got a measurement of 13.50 plus or minus 0 0.05 centimeters. Now this, remember, is an absolute form, but we could get our percentage uncertainty from this absolute form. So all you do is you take your absolute uncertainty, your 0 0.05, you divide it by your measurement of 13.50 and you times by 100. Okay, so you take the number on the right, your uncertainty, divide it by the measurement on the left, and you times by 100. So hopefully quite straightforward on how to get percentage uncertainties there. Now let's look at why percentage uncertainties are really useful. So when doing practical work, there will usually be at least two different measurements taken, each with their own uncertainty. So let's go back to the, the example I talked about with speed, distance, and time, because that's a nice easy one to try and get to grips with. So let's say we have a distance measurement and an uncertainty. Uh, we have a time measurement and an uncertainty in the time. Then these uncertainties will contribute to the uncertainty in the final result, but we need to know by how much. So we need to combine these two uncertainties for the distance and the time to get the uncertainty in our final value of speed, because getting the speed value in itself is quite straightforward just by distance over time. But we don't just divide our two uncertainties, okay? It doesn't work like that. In order to determine the overall uncertainty and our final result, our speed in this case, the percentage uncertainty in each measurement should be calculated and the largest value chosen. Okay, the other percentage errors can be ignored. So that means that our uncertainty in the final result is equal to the largest percentage uncertainty. So let's say I was trying to find my final uncertainty in the speed, and let's say my distance value had an uncertainty of 5% and my time value had an uncertainty of 10%, then my largest percentage uncertainty would be the 10%. So that would be my uncertainty in the speed. It would be my speed plus or minus 10%. So what I could then do is convert back from percentage uncertainty into absolute form. So I could then get what my actual value of that 10% is in the uncertainty in the speed. So just to recap, percentage uncertainties are really useful for us because they allow us to combine uncertainties and compare them in order to work out the final uncertainty in a result. So that's all from me guys. I hope this has been useful for you and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.